Okay. We'll be appreciate, appreciate for your attention, your attention ladies, ladies and gentlemen, as, as we are about to begin. And, and I have a few housekeeping items to, to make uh, before we begin, begin this uh, program today. today. First, First I'd, I'd like, like to request, request your assistance so uh, with, with the agenda. agenda. Please, uh, team. Um, and please, please review to the, the technical, technical verification and ensure that, that both audio, audio and video on the, the VCR are in the high quality and good performance, performance of you. And, and in, in, in accordance with our, our ground rules, rules for uh, live webinars, we request that uh, you switch off your video and mute your audio speakers for the duration of the webinars. Uh, and please submit your question and comments in the chat of uh, the, in the column chat uh, during the Q&A uh, areas. And then for your information that today's program is supported by interpretation features. You can uh, activate it by clicking the globe icon in the below Zoom menu and pick the preferred language with Bahasa Indonesia or English. And thank you for your attentiveness and cooperation. Let's start. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Salam, Om Swastiastu, Nama Budaya, Salam Kebajikan. Your Excellency Professor Insinyur M. Aman Wanganaka Kartasuma, as Director of IPMA International Business School. Your Excellency Dr. Derya Hadir, the Director of IPMA K Center. International Business School and your Excellency Kemala Chandra Kirana, the initiator of Membaca Sejak Moko, distinguished speakers, dear ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, I want to send... yeah, yeah. Okay, please mute it, the team. Okay. I want to say uh, my very warm regards to everyone. And we genuinely appreciate your, your time, time today. today. And, and as the MC, MC for, for today's, today's webinar, webinar, this is Jatlo and Humanism, Humanism Business, business organized, organized by IPMI and, and the Membaca Sudatmoko, team as a part as a team, team as a part of the Centennial and the Nursery of the Jatlo Moko. Okay, team, team can you be muted? Thank you. Uh, let me try, try my Facebook. Okay, I'd like again, again uh, we very want to say very warm greeting to everyone, and we generally appreciate it for your time today. And as an MC for today's uh, webinar, this is just more and human business organized by the International Business School and the Membaca Sujatmoko. Membaca Sujatmoko Tim, and as part of the centennial anniversary of Sujatmoko, I'm Bia Hadiyati. It is certainly an honor for me to represent it. Um, okay, okay, I'm going to the IPK Center of International Business School and Ibu Kemala Chandra Kirana, along with Sujatmoko Tim, are joining, are joining action, action on writing, on writing a vice digital case series. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. As a As contribution, contribution up to the year, long to the year, of long discussion of membaca, discussion of membaca, 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 mencari Indonesia. Mencari Indonesia. That is the that base, is base on, on his writings. writings. Sujat Moko, Moko is an is Indonesian, Indonesian politician and, and an intellectual. intellectual. His, his writings, writings in humanism, humanism are relevant to current business. business and management, management, management thinking. thinking. So, so we, we want, want to bring up uh, the topic, topic regarding, regarding how companies, companies that, that we are inviting as speakers address, address and resolve, resolve complex issues, issues through their business, business and, connecting and connecting the, the humanism, humanism of, of Sujatmoko. Today's, today's program, program will, uh, will, will, will provide, provide us a very wealth, wealth of, knowledge of knowledge by highlighting uh, the, uh, the connection, connection between, between companies, companies founders, founders and, and humanity. humanity. So, so we hopefully, hopefully uh, you find the program to be beneficial and of course interesting. And, and for, for the agenda, agenda maybe the, the team, team can uh, show up the agenda today. today. We will, we will have, have kind of remarks. remarks. Keep, keep. 
from, from Ibu Kumala Chandra Kirana and also Ibu directors, keynote speakers, and some, some videos, videos to be shown, shown and, and a session, session with uh, panelists, discussion with panelists, and the closing one. Okay. okay, before, before we, get we get started, started on, the on the first agenda, agenda Bapak Ibu, Ibu ladies and gentlemen, Ibu Kemala Chandra Kirana will give an introductory remarks to, to, to formally kick off, off the webinar. webinar. The Membaca Sudah Sujab Jatmo was first, first conceived and uh, developed, developed by Ibu Kemala, the eldest daughter of the late Bapak Sujab Jatmo. Dear Ibu Kemala, the screen is yours, Ibu. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Leah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, wishing you all good health. Um, on behalf of the Mambacha Sujat Moko team, I would just like to use this opportunity to express uh, our deep appreciation uh, and excitement in this collaboration with uh, IPMI International Business School. Uh, it has been um, a uh, very collaborative process where we uh, had uh, almost weekly um, uh, conversations to uh, develop uh, this uh, program with you today. And I'm very honored to be able to be uh, with you, with the distinguished speakers, with the rector of IPMI International Business School, Professor Aman Wirakarta Kusuma, and also thank you, um, especially for the uh, IPMI Case Center team uh, that has been working with us um, uh, quite intensively. This is the eighth um, uh, uh, discussion sessions in the series that began in uh, January 10, 2022, which was uh, the hundredth um, uh, birthday of our, our father if he had been um uh, if he were still alive and uh it's uh, we have covered um many different uh topics uh over the year um academic freedom uh development and the arts uh about um Sujat Moko's thinking on religion um history historical thinking on development and we also had um a competition essay competition with young uh, students from high school and uh, early years of university. Uh, Sujat Moko's writings, we have um, made digital copies of them and uh, are available in the website www.mambachasujatmoko.com. And we would very much welcome uh, anyone uh, of you to, to access that and hope that the conversation that we are doing today would simply be the beginning and that this is something that would, uh, is, is a conversation that would continue on the issue of humanism in business, something very timely in a very turbulent age um, of our uh, world today. So thank you again for this opportunity and uh, I look forward to hearing your words of wisdom and reflections. Um, thank you, Leah. Thank you very much, Ibu Kamala. Very, very concise, concise remarks. remarks. Bapak Bapa Adani, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen let's let's proceed, proceed to the, to the following, following remarks. And, and allow me to welcome Professor Aman Mirara Kratasuma. Uh, Thank, Thank you, Balia. Balia. The screen is yours, Pa. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for the very warm and kind introductory remark from Bunana. Please allow me first to greet Busanti, Baeli, Bumelina, Pak Deri, Pak Mitae, Pak Karimuna, Pak Jeff, Pak John, Pak Tomo. Pak Darsono, Pak Ari, Pak Agus, Pak Putri, and all distinguished speakers, guests, and IPMI colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. 
I'm delighted that I can be with you for this joint webinar of the Honorable Family of Bapak Sujat Moko and IPMI International Business School. I'm also delighted that hopefully this will be our first of the many public forums that will provide the rare opportunity to better understand the thinking and perspective of Bapak Sujat Moko, an intellectual with gravitas of someone who is ahead of his time, especially for all of us who are still grappling with the challenges of to be human and respected as a human being. In today's webinar, we will hear from our keynote speakers and distinguished panels on the topic of Sujat Moko and humanism in business, a topic that seeks to disseminate the current state of Indonesia's efforts especially the plights and evidence of commitments by Indonesia's current and next generational business societies initiatives to better collaborate, to humanize business and improve Indonesia's business beyond the traditional sense. Ladies and gentlemen, my opening speech is titled Humanizing Business, the role of business school for the 21st century, to which I elaborate as follows. I wish to remind myself and my colleagues on the need to understand the importance of humanizing business. Why? According to Sachs and Kujala, the traditional neoclassical business still view business firms as production machine between input from suppliers, investors, and employees, and output to customers. Firm value rather than on joint value creation and people are treated as resources instead of as human beings in value creation processes. Here, the metaphor of humanizing business is important and inspires to think alternatively about business management. It is, however, according to Yotam Luri, a metaphor that does not disclose itself easily is, is 22 years old. And they were already representing uh, in 1948, they're representing Indonesia as a special envoy to the United Nations to fought for the acknowledgement of Republic of Indonesia uh, as a sovereign state. That's who they are and who they made us to be today. me to introduce the relationship between humanities and business, I cannot uh, resist to look into our own company that were founded by most of those gentlemen that uh, are in uh, the pictures. So I saw and I had to read through the book that Nana provided to me because it was always my dream to be able to look into Ompoko's book but I only recall that at my early career, I was called quite often to Jalan Tanjung. It looks like that he was trying to pick up my brain because my father is a pragmatic and Om Koko is a, a, a thinker. And it would be the two of them that would uh, complement each other and bring realities to Om Koko and uh, make my father also uh, somebody who would also look far ahead into the future. So looking into those values and those perspectives, I cannot resist to share with you about Coco's, um, Coco's uh, values and our company's values and our founding father's values reflects what, what uh, Su Sujat Moko's uh, writings and how people perceive him very much into uh, the reality of who we are today. So if you see civility, tolerance, self-respect, respect for others, we translate it uh, into sabar, tabah, tekun, and iman. And our corporate values become integrity and professionalism. Now, if you look deeply, how my third generation translates sabar is behoves us to have sufficient knowledge and continuous learning. Uh, responding and adapting 
adapting to business dynamics. Takun, being smart is not enough. Being diligent is also important. Iman, faith to guide our decision making. So these values are shared at all levels in our organization and become the energy for continuous learning to achieve excellence in what we do. Can you move to the next slides, please? So as what we are today, just last Monday, we commemorate our 58th uh, anniversary of Samudra today. Their vision that was laid down by our finding fathers, which is Pastor Darpo and his friends that are pictured in the first slide, is connecting Indonesia and beyond. In our journey to where we got today, we have strived strategic partnership with local partners, but saying local partners, they are people from Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, India, Philippines, Hong Kong, Cambodia, China, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and United Arab Emirates. Our business partners are from the United States of America at the beginning, but in 1955, we had established a relationship with the biggest shipping company in Germany and with the company in still a lot of for our promotion. Moving forward, eight business partners we are gaining with. Move to the next slide. So let's look at where we are today in business. The values and humanity aspect, but Coco said, development is also about a process of social change, a process of transformation of the soul, the creative adaption of a culture. Today's business, Corporations must rethink their business model into focusing on life centricity, moving forward from a product and customer centricity. Life centricity means taking into consideration the humanity of the consumer, their shifting modes, and the unpredictable life forces that come into play along the way. So I cannot resist. Can you go to the next slide, please? You can, I cannot resist to recite another citation of Um Kokos thinking, a concept of modernization that does not emphasize competition, but cooperation. A concept of development that does not aim at affluence, but sufficiency. I cannot resist to look into where we are today, Indonesia. We are part of sustainable development goals, which address this 17th issues, which very much is uh, within us, I think it's in Nana, it's in Isda, it's in Galu, and in, in all the second generation of our founding fathers, our parents. But then I witnessed the G20 that we have just witnessed the two last days. We are there. We are really, how do you call it? Merangkul, yeah, merangkul, uh, embrace um, Koko's vision, and I cannot just. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit emotional in realizing that what um, Koko and our parents' uh, uh, emphasis of how the world should look like, and throughout their whole life, they're very uh, truthful to their passion and their belief that somehow or another have brought us Indonesia into the ability to host uh, the G20 where the presence of all leaders of the uh, so to call adiquasa countries and even developing countries throughout the world came to Bali, which is just a small part of Indonesia, but we were able to show uh, what we are able to, to, to provide and what we think should happen. And we are very actively involved. By that, I would 
maybe close my remark and say, we have to be thankful to God Almighty and also to the presence of our ancestors that led us through the education that they have, even regardless during which period it was and, and where we are today, that we are in this position and very fortunate. And I believe uh, Karim and the five different cases that you, you will see would also, I'm pretty sure, reflect uh, that we are there. We are in the journey of attaining what our founding fathers had dreamt about where the world should be and where Indonesia could evolve and is seemingly evolving. Thank you. Thank you, Vishanti. Thank you very much. The second, second keynote, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen Bapak, Bapak, Bapak Ibu, allow, allow me to call Bapak, Bapak Karimuna from PT Indonesia Hijau Widaya Ornamologi. Good afternoon, Bapak Karim. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello, yeah, yeah Bapak Karim. Bapak, 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 ladies and gentlemen, Bapak, Bapak Ibu, Ibu, Bapak, Bapak Karimuna is the head of design, design and Corporation. At PT Indonesia Jodi Daya or Bambuji, Bachelor of Science in the Wood Product Precision, Faculty of Forestry, University of British Columbia. The vision of Bambuji is to preserve the environment, preserve beauty, and preserve life. Am I right, Pak Karim? Yes. And it's great to see you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bolia. So, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Pak Deri, Profesor Aman Wirakarta Kusuma, Ibu Kamala Chandra Kirana, Ibu Shanti Puspo Subcipto, distinguished guests and panelists, and everyone here from the IPMI Case Center and IPMI International Business School. What a great honor it is for me to be invited to be a keynote speaker in this event. And please let me know if the connection is poor or if my voice is not loud enough. My name is Karim Munaf. I am 27 years old and I am the head of design and operations and co-founder at Bambuluji, PT Indonesia Hijau Duidaya. Bambuluji is a design and build company that specializes in bamboo composite structures. We utilize a type of bamboo composite called bamboo scrimber it, to be used for construction materials, thus giving an environmentally friendly and sustainable alternative for future construction projects. I have a small confession to make. The first time I heard of Pak Sujat Moko was, was when Pak Marialdi Lewis from the IPMI Case Center asked me to participate in this web webinar titled Reading Sujat Moko in Search of Indonesia. And my reaction was, oh wow, oh, what a great honor, but who is Pak Sujat Moko? <laughs> my heart starts to beat unusually fast. So after a little bit of research and an introductory meeting with IPMI Case Center, I learned that Pak Sujat Noko is a well-renowned and influential Indonesian intellectual, economist, and visionary who believe that any economic development should be for the benefit of the whole society and all its people. And I am very grateful for this opportunity to learn more about Pak pa Sujat Noko. My heart rate back to normal. Then my heart was sent racing again when the IPMI Case Center asked me to give a speech representing the younger generation. This is a great honor for me and Bambuluji. This is a very heavy mental to put on. I hope I can represent my generation well. So here I am today, a relatively young guy representing an even younger company. So we are just a tiny little baby compared to the other distinguished guest companies that are present here today. So back to Bambuluji. But uh, what do we do here at Bambuluji? As I have mentioned earlier, Bambuluji is a design and build company that specializes in bamboo composite structure. We also produce the raw material that we utilize for our designs through our affiliated company, PT Indonesia Hijau Papan, based in Pelabuhan Ratu, Sukabumi. The type of bamboo composite that we use is called bamboo scrimber. It is made from strands of bamboo fibers that are mixed with resin and then pressed into labrum beams. And it looks like this. <coughs> this gives us a material that is both strong and aesthetically pleasing. Bambuluji's vision is to preserve nature, preserve art and beauty, and preserve life. And we do this by giving design and technical solutions to construction projects by utilizing this bamboo composite as an alternative uh, building material. Our past projects have included several affordable housing units that are four stories tall, whose structure is made entirely uh, out of bamboo composite. 
We also have several luxury villas and cabins in pro uh, project in Bali, Bogor, and uh, Bandung area, showing the more higher end market potential for the use of bamboo for luxury applications. Why bamboo, as some of you might ask? During con the conception of the company, we want to find our blue ocean in the world of sustainable developments. And it also has to align with my family's and personal values, which were it has to be a business that makes money and make a living out of it, of course. It has to be beneficial and helpful to society. And it must not destroy or damage the environment. And we figured that bamboo is the answer that Indonesia desperately needs because bamboo is a strong and flexible material and also it is a resilient and fast growing plant. Some bamboo species can grow nearly a meter a day and we know how resilient it is as people have problems getting rid of wild bamboo growing in their backyard or farms. And there it is, I use the word getting rid. Because yes, it is true, so far bamboo is regarded more of a nuisance for us. Bambooji firmly believes that bamboo can be one of the major solutions for Indonesia's increasing environmental problems as bamboo plants are great carbon sinks for our earth. But how do we conserve bamboo or even grow more bamboo forests? And we have heard in the past where initiatives of to plant bamboo trees to restore degraded lands have been done before, but then what? In the eyes of the farmers, uh, bamboo is, more, is a nuisance and for them it doesn't yield much money compared to the other crop that the farmer is growing. That's why lands are cleared up and bamboo forests eradicated to make way for, for farmlands. Bambooji believes that to conserve bamboo, uh, bamboo, we need to utilize it and even more create a dependency on it. An easy example to this way of thinking of conservation is guess the three animal species that are very unlikely to go extinct. Cows, chicken and pigs. We would never let these animals go extinct as we have developed an economic dependency on it. We would move heaven and earth to prevent the loss of those animals. Who doesn't like meat? Going back to bamboo, Bambooji through our affiliated company that produces the bamboo composite have set up a raw material purchasing system that we named Bamboo Bank for the local farmers that supplied bamboo to us. They can supply any amount of bamboo. It can be as little as just one bamboo pole and we will pay them in cash as it arrives on the factory. We price each bamboo pole at a very reasonable price. Say a farmer casually harvests 20 bamboo poles from the edges of their farmlands at the end of their day tending the field and delivers it to our factory. That farmer will get an additional income of enough to satisfy their daily food needs. And if the farmer keeps it on for a month, their additional income will be north of the minimum wage in that area if they harvested at least 20 bamboo, uh, 20 bamboo poles per day. And yet our factory can consume 3,000 bamboo poles per day. This system has created a paradigm shift in the farmer's point of view on bamboo. Now they see them as a source of income and naturally will seek to secure this new revenue stream for them. We teach them how to harvest bamboo sustainably and when correctly harvested, it actually increases the bamboo growth rate as we manage the amount of competition, with, uh, competition uh, for sunlight. So I hope from this little story, Bambooji can contribute something to this community. We can see that this is a win-win solution for everyone in the value chain of Bambooji. Fact factory gets a steady supply it needs at reasonable price, and the locals feel the benefit directly and immediately due to the factory's existence in their area. These farmers reap the reward for being a casual supplier to the factory, so their independence and original profession is preserved. This little story so far is happening only in one location and one factory. The biggest challenge for the bamboo composite industry is introducing this new material to the market. Bambooji has been for some time focuses on creating solutions that utilizes bamboo for building materials. Everyone can see this from our projects, uh, the learning curve that Bambooji went through. We started off creating simple structures and now we are able to create structures that are superior to conventional buildings in terms of aesthetics, quality and cost. We constantly innovate from every project that we do to make us more competitive and more viable to the market. We have seen how co some companies in the pursuit of making themselves more competitive to the market is to deliver the products at a more competitive pricing, no matter what. In doing so, they start to squeeze people in the value chain. Bambooji is committed to becoming more competitive through innovation and bright ideas that makes our product better in quality, highly efficient, environmentally friendly, and price competitive. 
we won't betray our humanistic value as it defeats the whole purpose of promoting bamboo as a material that is beneficial for everyone. Hopefully we can live up to the belief of Pasujat Moko as the bamboo industry grows. As someone coming from the younger generations, I would like to remind everyone of a lesson that was once taught to us when we were young. When we were small, we were taught to be nice to one another. And it's that simple lesson that had been implemented in Bambuji's business practices. In our pursuit of, for wealth and prosperity, it can sometimes make us forget that the basic decency that were taught to us when we were kids. So there you go, an age old lesson from our youths that we can start to implement in order to keep the teachings and humanistic values of Pasu Jatnoko legacy live on. Thank you everyone for your time. Once again, this is a great honor for me to be given this opportunity to share in this forum. Back to you, Julia. Thank you, Papa. Thank you. Thank you. Very eye opening, opening about bamboo. bamboo. And, and here, here, this, this is for sure, sure Papa Dadi. Without, without further, further ado, ado uh, please, please enjoy, enjoy the video introduction, introduction that will present and emphasize to the background of, of the five companies, companies or initiations that, that we have invited to serve on our panel. panel. The, the team, team, please. please. If there are people dedicating their lives to tackle some of the world's most pressing challenges, then we need to support them. That's why we started Earth Company. We select and support exceptional, one-of-a-kind change makers who can make much deeper and wider impact if they have access to resources. We call them impact heroes. Before I was a midwife, I was very happy as a school teacher, but I had this calling to give babies a chance to arrive on the earth without trauma and to give mothers respectful care. Our first clinic was in Bali. It started not as a clinic, it started as just a door-to-door -door service. And all of our services were always free. And I found that the people here had many, many difficulties getting the care that they needed in their pregnancy and for birth and for postpartum care. I had a lot of heartbreak in my life. My sister died. She died from a complication of pregnancy. The doctor, all he had to do was give her medication. All he had to do was look at her chart and care for one minute. So I decide then, okay, being a school teacher is nice, but I want to be a midwife. Because I believe if my sister had a midwife, the midwife would hold her hand and make sure that the doctor listened.
forming Basa Basudara started in late 2019, after a conversation with friends in Ambon, who pointed out that there are only a few students from Maluku who are able to study overseas. The reason for this is not lack of scholarship, but because many Malukan students failed their English tests. Considering that there are Malukans in the Netherlands, Indonesia, United Kingdom, United States of America and Australia who are fluent or even native speakers, the idea then came to create a platform to connect these resources with the students. Originally, the idea was for one-on-one -on -one tutoring using Skype or WhatsApp. However, after several discussions, we decided to have a virtual classroom setting with the facilitator present. The role of the facilitator is to help the tutor organize the class, liaise with the students, help with translation if the tutor is stuck, and monitor the progress of the class. The first meeting with the web designer was in late November 2019. The website bahasabasudara.org was ready by March 2020 and has also been improved several times to include English, German and Indonesian language versions. The first class started on May 5, 2020, after we had five tutors available. These classes were run in cooperation with the Language Study Center Patimura University under the leadership of Ibu Meri Nikuyulu. Since then, the progress of Bahasa Basudara has been unbelievable. At the time of recording, we have completed 148 classes and are running 54 classes each week. Most of these are English classes, but we also have German, Dutch and Indonesian classes. We have students from different areas inside and outside Maluku as well. The classes are run in cooperation with University of Patimura, Christian University Indonesia Maluku, Islam State Institute Kalbe believes everyone has the right to a better life. A better life begins with healthy living. Healthy living enables us to make our dreams come true, achieve our goals in life, build a happy family and a healthy generation. Kalbe was established in 1966 with the mission to improve health for a better life.
After decades of dedication and commitment, Calbe's business has grown and now includes pharmaceuticals, consumer health, nutritionals, distribution and logistics, biopharmaceuticals and medical devices. Guided by our founders' aspirations to improve healthcare to millions, Calbe succeeded with these five corporate values. Pancha Sarada. Trust is the glue of life. We honor and treat people as we would like to be treated. Therefore, we respect our customers, respect our employees, respect our partners. Okay, thank, thank you, you to the team, Bapak Ibu, ladies and gentlemen. Our, our next session, session actually will be more related. That's the four of our two turn, turn and call Bapak Agus Lukman to moderate our, our primary agenda. agenda. Good afternoon, Bapak Agus. Uh, good afternoon, Pak Lia. Yeah, yeah, Bapak, Bapak Agus, Agus Bapak, Bapak, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is the CEO and Renal of Nikkei Centers, Centers and also the Director of Global Partnership and Institutional Development of International Business School. Pak Agus, Agus is great. Uh, thank you very much, um, Mbak Lia, uh, for the opportunity given. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, first of all, please bear with me. Um, I would like to introduce uh, our panelists for today. Uh, we'll start with uh, from Bahasa Basudara of KIK, which is Pak Jeff Maile Holo. Um, Pak Jeff is currently a volunteer in Bahasa Basudara, uh, which is a community interest uh, company. Um, it, but he also is a non-executive director for several natural resources and energy companies around the world. Um, Copper Lake Resources in Canada, Equator Gold, which is in South Sudan, uh, the Sarina resources in Kalimantan, but also Edenville Energy uh, in Western Tanzania. Um, he is a graduate of University of California, Santa Barbara, but also having a doctorate, uh, a PhD in geological and earth sciences from the University College of London, University of London. The second uh, panelist today, ladies and gentlemen, would be Bapak Tomiro Hamakawa. Uh, he is a connector and an accidental hotelier. Um, therefore, therefore, he is, is the, the co-founder of, of the Mana Earth Paradise, Paradise co-founder co and managing director of the Earth Company. company. Um, but Tomohiro is actually a graduate of the Harvard, Harvard University, University uh, in, in anthropology, anthropology. Uh, but also uh, a master of public policy from the Harvard Kennedy School. And now we move on to the third um, speaker would be Ipu Helianti Hillman. Uh, she is currently the founder and executive commissioner of PT Kampung Arifan Indonesia or Javara. Um, she is a bachelor degree in law from University of Pajajaran, but also obtained the master of law in intellectual property rights from King's College London, the University of London. Um, her role here as the founder and executive commissioner is to remain committed to the mission of the company, which is to delivering food biodiversity to the wider market and mobilizing market participation through sustainable consumption. Our next speaker would be Ibu Iwarawati, but in this case, uh, it will also be complemented by Ibu Melina Karamoy from Pete Kalbe Pharma. She is currently general manager and corporate communication for sustainability at Pete Kalbe Pharma uh, TPK. She is an experienced communication management uh, officer for more than 25 years, setting up corporate sustainability in line with SDGs and also the standards of sustainable reporting with GRI. Uh, she is a uh, graduate uh, in Bachelor of Degree in Communications for the Science from the Public Relations Institute of Social and Political Science in Jakarta and obtained a Bachelor Degree in Management Communication from University of Waikato, Hamilton, New Zealand. And finally, we have Bapak Darsono Hartono. He is currently the CEO of PT Rimbam Akmur Utama. Uh, and previously, he was the associate at J.P. Morgan Chase and & Company, and also the senior associate of Price for House Coopers, both in, in New, York New York City. City. But Darsono is actually, actually a graduate, graduate 
um, from Cornell, Cornell University, University Bachelor of Science, Science in Operations Research, Research in Industrial Engineering, and also a Master of Engineering at the same University, Cornell University in Operations Research. So, ladies and gentlemen, so our, our panelists for today for this webinar, I welcome them and we wish them all the best in presenting. And we would, like what Unan had mentioned, we certainly would like to hear the work of work. And we'll start for the first five minutes. Uh, yes, my holo. Please do share with us um, on your um, uh, endeavor to do Bahasa Bahasa The time and place is your project. Thank you. Is but Jeff online, please. See, but Jeff is here. Uh, but Jeff, are you still here? Right. Hi, but Jeff. Are you back? Uh, sorry. All right. <laughs> so, internet has just gone on. Okay, bye, bye, Jay. Go ahead. Uh, uh, just a note uh, that, that Basa 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 is our, our partner. partner. Together, we also uh, support uh, the endeavor of Basa 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Sorry, I missed the question. So my internet was out just now. So, can you repeat that? Yes, yes. Uh, I would like, like to repeat. It's actually your, your time, time now to present. Uh, 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 thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and apologies. Just just five five minutes. Minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, so uh, as the video, video shows, shows, what is, is Basa We are a free online language training platform for people in Manuku. And what ways so that people of all economic background can access it? And then online so that it can be treated with islands in Manuku. Uh, why, why we set, set it up? Because, because uh, I live in the UK, these people don't know. know. Uh, and, and we notice every, every year, year thousands of Indian students studying in the UK. The UK. But, but perhaps once every five, five years, years, people come from, from, from Malaku. So, so really rarely people come from Malaku. And yet, uh, I think Malukans is probably one of the largest diaspora in the nation. Diaspora in the world, we've got 70,000 Moroccans in Poland, we've got hundreds in the UK, uh, Australia, USA. So, so the whole idea, idea is to connect these uh, uh, the diaspora, the Indonesian diaspora, Moroccan diaspora, worldwide with people in Moroccan. Uh, and, and to achieve that, that, we set up, up a community interest company in the UK so we can start funding, raising some funds and funding some projects. Uh, the video that, that we showed just now, that was probably done, done about a year ago. And, and by now, we've completed and running 370 classes, and we've got 182 tutors uh, worldwide. And, and the whole concept, concept of Basa is based on, on volunteering, and, and, and most, most of the tutors are professionals around the globe. So, so the thing think Basa Basudara reflects the values of people, people involved in their desire to empower people in Malaku. Uh, in, in, in other words, words it's in line with our trio of line by two lines, helping each other. I think that's, that's probably, probably a, a very short summary of what the Sabah Sudara do and what, what, uh, no, no, what we are, uh, perhaps different than an uh, organization in, 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 the, in this uh, panel, that we are mainly diaspora. Uh, in, 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 uh, in Thank, you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can't, I can't, I can't hear, hear you. Thank, Thank you very much, much by Jeff. Jeff. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Um, let, let us now move on to our second. second uh, speaker or panelist, panelist, which is Pato Makawa. Uh, he is not here at the moment, but he has gladly uh, provided us with a video. Um, and I would like to have the team to please upload 
uh, his video presentation, please. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Tomo Hamakawa. Uh, I'm the co-founder of Earth Company and Mana Earthy Paradise, which is where I am at right now. Uh, it's been a real pleasure working with Pat Jerry and Putri uh, in uh, creating the case study uh, for Earth Company. And I'm sorry I can't participate in the event, um, uh, but this is my way of uh, expressing my gratitude and excitement for what uh, IPME stands for. For businesses, humanism is everything. To me, it's a very important reminder for businesses to stay humble, uh, to be responsible, uh, and to give back to the community that they belong to. I think running a business uh, is, a, is a privilege, and we should not take that privilege. Uh, we shouldn't take, that, take advantage of that privilege. We shouldn't take it for granted. And so that is exactly what we do at MANA and Earth Company, or at least try to do. Uh, and that is very difficult uh, when something like the pandemic happens, uh, when you're trying to take care of the people, take care of the environment. Um, but I do think because it's difficult, it's a challenge that we all as founders, as leaders of businesses should actually uh, address and prioritize. Um, and that's, that's something that we also experienced here at MANA. We didn't actually uh, lay, anything, lay anyone off uh, during the pandemic. We kept everyone at reduced engagement. Uh, and that only brought us together stronger. And now I, I feel like we're in a much better position, much better place uh, to be able to thrive now that the pandemic is over. This idea of regeneration is extremely important to us at Earth Company. Our mission is to create regenerative futures. Uh, we want to go beyond sustainability. We want to go beyond just addressing the issues, all the negative stuff that we as humans have created on this earth. And we want to actually leave this world a better place than we came in, than when we started. Th to me, that is what regeneration means, is to create a net positive effect in terms of society, in terms of community, in terms of the environment, everything that we do, all stakeholders involved. And so that's what we're trying to do uh, at Earth Company as well as MANA. Uh, I think at MANA it's, very, it's much easier to see that because we're trying to embody the regenerative spirit uh, in practice. And so we're surrounded by nature, we're taking care of nature, we're also embedded in a community, we're also trying to contribute to the community. So everything that we do. And in terms of SDGs uh, and humanism, uh, I think that's a very, very similar idea. I think only through humanism can we achieve the SDGs and go beyond the SDGs. And I think it's about being, uh, being humble, being responsible, uh, and ha just having a healthy attitude towards everything that surrounds us, everything that we're connected to. I think that kind of interconnection is really at the heart of everything that we do. I think humanism used to be at the heart of business and in the last 50 years 100 years i think businesses have started to receive a bad rep uh, it's starting to be known as a force for evil as opposed to force for good which is something like the b corporation emphasizes and i do think businesses and all organizations should be a force for good and i think it's reminding us to go back to our roots Go back to the basics of why we want to start our companies, why we want to run our businesses. And I think that sense of purpose, sense of humanism, should really be driving us to the future. Thank you so much for having us as part of this community. Uh, I'll love to keep in touch with all of you uh, and to exchange, uh, exchange best practices, share lessons uh, so that we can continue to improve as businesses, as organizations. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Tomo Iro, for your uh, thoughts and, and sharing with us. Um, our next speaker, panelist, Ibu Helianti Hilman. The time is yours from Japan. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, Ibu. Thank, Thank you. So, so it's, it's, um, it's, it's an, an honor, honor to, to be here. And, and I, I think, think I, I also... Um, 
maybe, maybe came the comments made by, by the other speakers, speakers because yes. um, uh, uh, we, are we are humble, humble but, but at the same, same time, time uh, Sujat Moko, the name of Sujat Moko is also, also you know, probably uh, new for, for some of us. us. And, and um, but, but I'm also very enchanted by the um, the humanism that, that actually you know we share the same values. Uh, which, uh, which also, also become, become the driving, driving force of the things, things that, that we do. We do. Um, so, so going, going back, back in terms of the uh, humanism um, in, in, in our, our business, business uh, for, for us, us um, and especially, especially for me as, as the founder, founder of Javara, is actually, actually the reason, reason of existence. existence. Um, um, I left like my, my work as consultant uh, for, for some international agencies because, because I do find my calling to sustain, to sustain Indonesia's, Indonesia's forgotten food by diversity and indigenous wisdom. Uh, for, uh, for, for various reasons, reasons not, not because, because I'm being romantically foodies, foodies and, and I, love I love to cook, I love to travel, I love to, travel, travel, I love to, um, to, um, to eat. eat. But, but we, we, I, I also, also can, can find, find a lot of, of um, you, know, you know, the soul of food, food has, has lost, lost in so, so many decades. Food is supposed to connect people. Food is supposed to um, you, know, you know, to, to, to uh, nourish, nourish people. people. But, but somehow, somehow that, that has been derailed uh, for, for many, many decades because, 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 you know, we are moving towards, towards a very fast world. world. Um, um, so so um, that's, that's why, why um, we, we have, have lost, lost what, what the nature, nature has given, given us. You know, you know we, we are so struggling so much um, around the world in terms of, of you know, addressing the, the you know, global, global health and, and global, global diet challenges, challenges. You, know, you know, stunting, stunting malnutrition, um, poor diets. And, and at, at the, the same, same time, time, you know, you know there, there are so many efforts in terms of, of you know, bioscience, uh, research, technology, technology, you know, um, is being, being done, done to address, address food security. security. But at, at the, the same, same time, time what, what actually we already have is being, being forgotten. Nature, Nature has provided us with so many wild edible food. food. And, and um, I've, I've been, been traveling across Indonesia for my work, work you know, from Aceh to Papua, going foraging in, in different uh, forests, uh, in, in Kalimantan, Kalimantan in, uh, in Sumatra, in Papua, in many, many ports. And, and during, during my interaction with the indigenous, indigenous communities, uh, with, with the local, local or smallholder small farmers, farmers, I, you know, you know it's, it's a very eye opening, opening to realize that actually, actually what we thought, thought, you know, you know we, we need, need to gain through so many um, new um, efforts. efforts. Actually, it's, it's already, already out, out there. there. But, but the, the knowledge, knowledge about our food by diversity, the knowledge about our indigenous wisdom, wisdom was so sort of like, you know, you know being, being marginalized, marginalized and, and, you know, um, step aside. And, and we are losing, losing that connection. connection. So, so that's, that's why, why when Jawara was established, it's, it's very, very clear. clear. Our, our calling is to sustain Indonesia's forgotten food by diversity and indigenous wisdom for three reasons. One, One is, is to, to give, give farmers and food artisans a fair, sustainable, and dignifying market access. Second is to give consumers healthier options of diets. diets. Um, and um, the third and is the basically, basically to help to sustain and, and nurture our, our nature, nature by creating products, products that, that are, are you know, you organically, organically grown, grown or, or you know, sustainably uh, produced. produced. But, but again, again, during the, the, you know, the, the, the journey, journey of the company, company itself, itself the humanistic, the humanistic mission, mission is not only our reason, reason of existence, but it is also our core business. And, and it is also how the branding, branding of the company is being built around. So, so if, if we lose that humanist mission, it seems, it seems like, like you know, we are losing the soul of our company. company. Um, um, but, but again, we also have to, what do you call it, um, to adapt. Uh, we also have to um, face the demands for survival, for growth, especially, for example, during the, uh, the pandemic. And, and this, this is where, where you know, we, we have, have to revisit our, our business model. model. We, we have, have to restructure, we have to do business transformation, uh, we have to really work on our organization model. And, and also, for example, in our case, we also spin off our activities related with investing on human capital or capacity building for our partners. Because this is not an overnight thing to do. Uh, because at the end of the day, with our work at Javara to you know, you know uh, to, to build, build the supply chain, chain from the local, local farms to the global, global market. market. Um, someone, someone has to invest on the human capital and the origin uh, because, because they are the true guardian of our food biodiversity heritage. 
So, so this, is this is something, something that, that, you know, eventually, eventually in 2017, I decided to spin off um, a Javara Academy, Academy and, and now become the School of Rural Food, food Artists because, because it has a completely different KPI. KPI. Um, so, so I think, I think that's, that's one of the, you know, one of the um, uh, compromised ideas that we also have to do in terms, in terms of ensuring that, that as, as a company, company we survive, survive and, and grow, but at the same time, in terms, terms of our mission, um, uh, humanistic uh, mission, we still you know, keep it alive. alive. And, and, um, and and also, also there, there are so many pragmatic, pragmatic things that, that you know, you know we, we have to to, to do, do. For, for example, we used to have like, like you know hundreds of products. products. Probably like, like even there was a time where we have one thousand three hundred products of SKUs. SKUs. And, and you know, and, you know um, and, and we, we have, have to revisit the numbers. numbers. It, it doesn't, doesn't mean that, that we crossed it out, but we work on a different business model where we onboard other local brands that are you know sharing the same values, the same mission, and give them the um, access, access to market infrastructure, infrastructure that we already have. Excuse me, so, so, we have yes. one more minute. Thank you yes, so this is my last statement. statement. That's great. Uh, Thank so, you this so, is, yeah. so, so at the end, end of the day, day the SDG is like mm. a new term. But, but the, the values, values of it, we have been, been doing it. You know, it's, it's been, been you know, part of an integrated uh, aspect of, of our company's uh, values and, and operations. But, but actually, actually, even for our communities, for the Indonesian communities, for, you know, for, you know hundreds of years, years the, the SDG is actually, you know, you know it's always part, part of the work that we have to do. do. So, so it's just, just a new renaming, rebranding right. uh, of something that is already um, access. But, but again, we have to continue keeping um the, the, the values and the mission of life, life and, and you know, give a, a, a new breath of air in how we deliver it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so, so much, Ibu uh, Elianti, for your time and wisdom. wisdom. Um, our next speaker would be Ibu Irawati Stiadi. Uh, again, unfortunately, she is absent today, but have graciously provided us with a video presentation. Um, we kindly uh, would like to see the presentation now. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, Bapak Ibu. Thank you, Ibmi, for having me in this momentous time to celebrate 100 years of Pa Sujat Moko. It's an honor to be here with Prof. Aman, whom I know from Akademi Ilmu Pangan dan Gisi, Ibu Santi, my longtime friend, and of course Nana, whom I know from our years at Cornell. And of course, with the other well-known speakers and panelists. When Anna asked me whether I want to share Carl Bay from a business and humanist perspective, I wondered why the question. I know there are some people out there who see business as a money-making machine whose only purpose is to make profit. Being exposed to and part of day-to-day -day conversation at home since childhood, I think business can be a great vehicle to do good for the planet and people. In spite of the fact that I am out of the country, I am intrigued by this question and IPMI was nice enough to accept this video. Thank you IPMI. When my uncle, Dr. Bunyamin Setiawan, who is a medical doctor and pharmacologist by training, started this business, his sole purpose was to have enough money to do research. That was his passion. After a few failed attempts, Kalbe was born in 1966. And when professionals started to come in, one of them suggested Dr. Boon to make a vision and mission statement for Kalbe. So that's how the mission statement of improving health for a better life came to be, which is a shorter version of the scientific pursuit of health for a better life. We kept this mission statement until today. As for our company values, Kalbe Pancasrada, we kept the name and the values and added one strada or belief, which was mindfulness, to adapt to the current conditions. From these vision, mission, and value statements, we formulate our strategies and initiatives. As you can see, to reach our vision to exist in the next 100 years, we need to become a sustainable business. 
And to be sustainable, we focus on people, process, innovation and technology and having a global foothold. People are our assets as we are more of a knowledge intensive than capital intensive industries. We spend a lot of resources training our people to keep up with advances in science and technology. Involving also training in attitude of Kalbe Panchasrada, which is more critical and difficult to teach. In terms of processes, we make sure the right processes are followed from procurement, R&D, manufacturing, distribution, and marketing. And since we make healthcare products, these processes need to be done right to ensure quality products at the right cost and timely deliveries. As for innovation and technology in our line of business, it is at the core. With the merger of biotechnology and information technology, it is scary to see what healthcare can become. Robotic surgery, AI doctors, and gene editing are just some examples. We also collaborate with universities and other companies for technology transfer, conducting research awards for senior scientists and young scientists are some of the initiatives to promote research in Indonesia. Improving the health of our consumers globally and locally is our mission. A lot of education for doctors, midwives, regulatory institutions, mothers, pregnant mothers, senior citizens, drugstore, and water owners need to be done to ensure proper usage and storage. The provision of sustainability initiatives is not only necessary for achieving the SDGs, but also for ensuring the sustainability for our brands and factories. We believe that for Kalbe to be around for 100 years, we need to have a sustainable business and for that, a sustainable environment. The challenge is to pass down these values and cultures to future generations in the company as well as in the family. Our continued education of these values and mission will hopefully lead to success. Thank you. Stay safe and healthy. Thank you very much, Ibu Irawati, uh, for your presentation. Uh, and now we'd like to move to Papa Darsano Hartono, uh, the CEO of PT Rimba Makmurutama. The time and place is yours, Pa Darsano. Thank you, Pagus. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it, is it is a privilege, privilege uh, to be here today. today. Uh, thank, thank you, you me for inviting me, me. and uh, uh, to, to commemorate 100 years of Asujan Moko. Just, Just like, like any, any other, other, the other, other panelists, panelists, and, and I, don't I don't know about Asujan Moko, Moko, but the more, more I learn about him, him the more I see that he is such a visionary during his time. Uh, for, for some, some of you who don't know what we do, my company, Pepe Rima we are actually a nature-based solution company that uh, see the way we can solve the climate change issue and the inequality issue for better Indonesia and better world. So what is a nature-based solution company? So what we do is we protect and restore a 157,000 hectares of peatland in central Kalimantan, where we provide sustainable livelihood, working closely with community as part of the solution. And as a result, we will be able to produce carbon credit as part of a environmental services of which a lot of companies are seeking right now in order for them to fulfill the net zero commitment. When I started this business 15 years ago, nobody knew what carbon credit is. Nobody understands what we do. And nobody really see that there's a path of profitability to do what we do. I was uh, challenged by my Cornelian colleague, uh, Rezal Kusuman Maja, who is our CEO today, that he, that he said, said there's, 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 there's this business, business that, that you can save and store forest, forest in Central Kalimantan, 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 Kalimantan providing sustainable livelihood for the people, and, and finally make money by, by producing carbon credit. credit. 
In 2007, when we started this, I never thought that, you know, such a business like this. But uh, 15 years later, after six years as the only employee of my company, Katingang Entire Project is the world's largest nature-based solution company in the world. We have produced more than 45 million tons of carbon credit. For some of you who are not familiar, just to give you an example of how much cars that we save, 45 million is equivalent to saving about 15 million cars of emission today. So, when, when I, I was asked, asked to do this panel, panel uh, you know, the, the, the question becomes, how can we relate humanism to what we do? do? But I think, you know, you know if, if you look at the definition of humanism, humanism it's, it's about, about how we how can be human and have a moral compass to do the right thing, thing to help, help each other as human. human. But, I but I think more importantly now, the way I see humanism, humanism is how we also have to treat other creatures as good as how we treat others. I think, I think, you know, you know the, the fact, fact is, is the past, past 100 years, years with this industrialization happened, we, we never took care, care of nature. nature. We, we always take the granted the environment. environment. So, so hence, I, I think, think that now it's really about changing, changing the way we do business, business and through cutting an entire project, we can prove that there is a way out of this. The fact is we have basically trashed this planet for so long. It's, it's time, time for us, us to make a change. change. And, and I think, I think uh, with our, our experience in, in, uh, in Katak Nyang Project, project we, can we can show the world, the world that, that if we, we work, work together, together holistically, holistically, we work together, together with, with other people, people who believe in what, what we do, there, there is a bright future. future. I think, I think uh, the fact is, if we strongly believe in humanism, we strongly believe that we are, even though we are the smartest creature in this planet, we have to be humble, just like the other panelists said, we have, we have to be, be humble, humble in front of, of nature. nature. I, think I think this is something that we have to really think, think through. through. We, we cannot, cannot treat nature as our possession. We should, we should treat, treat, treat nature as a steward, steward instead, instead of something, something that we own. Hence, we can pass, pass it to, to our, our next, next generation. generation. So, so um, I think, um, I think in, summary, in summary, there is there a is new, new way to way do to business, business where you where can... You can Solve the, solve the climate change business. business. You can, can solve, solve the inequality, inequality problem and being inclusive, inclusive and you can, and you can still, still make money. money. And, and a lot of surveys have, have shown that the company to survive for the next 100 years, years are the company, the company that has purpose. purpose. I know, I know for some, some of us who went, went to school in the, in the 90s, 90s. shareholders value is always equivalent to profit. profit. People talk about profitability. But I think for now, for company purpose, profit cannot be purpose anymore. I think, I think for companies, companies to sustain, sustain for the next 100 years, years have to sell our purpose for forces for good, whether they're solving the climate change issue or solving the inequality issue. Hence, I think the idea of humanism really has to be sticking to everybody's mind, every business operator, every entrepreneur have to believe and strongly think that this humanism is a way for us to get out of the troubled, I say troubled, but not, you know, uh, that can, can fix, fix uh, the, the past, past 100, 100 years. years. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you so, you so much, much Dr. Dr. Um, for the wisdom that you see uh, through your work, the great work in Rimba Makmur Utama. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are now entering for the next 20 minutes uh, and this discussion, and then we also need short of time as well. Uh, maybe I'd also like to also include later on the Q&A session. Um, but in this opportunity, I would just like to start by uh, asking uh, the panelists. And in this case, I would also like to invite our keynote speakers, Ibu Sandi and Bakarim, uh, to join into the panelist discussion. Um, uh, before we first proceed, I'd like to just raise a question for, for all of us. And I'd like to pick up um, from all of you would be the issue of um, uh, that Ibu Heli had mentioned about the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, she mentioned uh, that it's actually a rebranding of the things that we'd actually um, had um, already in our endeavors, in our uh, businesses. Um, I, I, uh, I was wondering whether for example, pa Jeff, um, Mungkin Ibu uh, 
Melina on behalf of Ibu Irawati, but also including Pak Darsono. Uh, what do you think, Pak? Is it actually uh, an old wine in a new bottle in the context of Indonesia and also in the context of uh, humanism? But Jeff, would you like to respond? Sure. sure. Okay. Uh, look, for, for me, humanism is always part of business. Okay. Uh, let me start with, with uh, you know, why do we, I think, I think somebody, somebody mentioned, mentched mentioned this already as well. Why, why do we want to build business? business? I think some, some of the sure is not, not only, only to enrich, enrich yourself, yourself but to enrich others by creating jobs, uh, to, to better, better the society. society by providing services or products. So, so in my view, humanism, humanism is always, always part, part of, of an integral, integral part of business. business. Uh, and and like in terms, terms of, of SDG, SDG, and I think, I think uh, in, in, in our, our life, life not no, humanism should, should be only in business. business. It should, it should be in everything. That we do. Now, I mean, we're, we're, we're part, part of society. society. We're, We're here, here only for, for limited, limited time, time. And, and again, again I don't think uh, somebody we mentioned, mentioned this. I mean, we, we, we want, want to leave the world with a, with a with better, better world. world. <laughs> we want, want to, to improve, improve the society. society. So, so I think that's, that's uh, part of sustainability. sustainability. Yeah. You know, perhaps you should call that like a city and leave something to the rest of the society with a better society than you are. So, I'm not, I'm not sure whether sure it's, uh, I think SDG is the core of this business. Uh, yeah, 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 so so much 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 that. Thank, Thank you so, so much, much to start out of the discussion. discussion. Um, um, what is your thought, Ibu um, uh, Melina? On uh, the other uh, channel, yes, yes, please. Right. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Pa. I think uh, uh, for, for how the humanism is, is, is important, important because uh, uh, having a company that really needs to uh, help, help for everyone. everyone. Mm -hmm. Therefore, how they believe everyone has the right to have a better life, life uh, which begins with healthy living and it is clearly stated in our mission, uh, which is improve health for a better life. So, how can we enable people? People to, to make, make their, their own dreams come true, true achieve every goal in, in, in their, their life, and build a happy family, family and, and, and healthy generations. generations. I think that, that uh, uh, I think, and, and then uh, uh, in relating with SDG, SDG is something that, that uh, we, we all, all need to support to save our, our planet and, and also people. people. And, and how they, uh, as a responsible Indonesia global healthcare company, company also, also contributes through initiatives in alignment with the uh, sustainable development goals. As, as Ibu Ira mentioned, we are focusing uh, on SDG3, which is good health and well-being. Uh, we, we align uh, not only uh, with, the, with the SDG3, but also uh, with another uh, SDGs because they are interwoven. <laughs> um, in, in that, in that, that um, presentation uh, of Ibu Ira, uh, we can, can see that, that uh, we have our uh, sustainability pillars. Uh, Ibu Ira mentioned about the sector, but, but we have also uh, the, uh, the, uh, the pillars for internal. Uh, we, we call it ARAT. It is a uh, ARAT and SEHAT actually is the abbreviation. ARAT stands for access, second body, body aspiring and taking action. action. Meanwhile, Meanwhile they have stand for science, including technology, environment, health, education, access to healthcare, and also total disease ecosystem. So through the, our four internal RATILAS, we strengthen the company's uh, resources capacity to deliver a positive impact and benefit to our stakeholders. And uh, the other five pillars, we contribute to the country by answering our stakeholder needs to uh, for trusted health products and services. Yeah, so, uh, and, and also, also we have, have the value based on the value and the spirit of Kalkade. Actually, Kalkade uh, are committed to, to provide the best for improving health for, for a better life, life of Indonesian people and, and the country countries we operate right in. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, uh, Ibu uh, Melina. Um, I, I guess, in my, from my perspective, and from Kalkade, is actually. Um, the SDGs uh, is not necessarily a rebranding, but it's actually a sense of a, a framework in which um, on your particular 
um, side um, of interpreting what humanism is in your context in the pharmaceutical industry. Yeah. Um, um, Sono, any thoughts about whether SDGs is actually a, an old wine and a new bottle? Uh, I think the way I see X, SDG, SDG, I'm going to use this as a, as a, as a sort of like, like a metaphor. metaphor. SDG is like, like menu. Menu. A, menu a menu for, for the world. world. If, if we, we want, want to be able to exist, exist for uh, 100, 100 years, years 1,000 years, 10,000 years, years, and, and also, also in terms of our interaction, interaction with, uh, with each, each other. other. So, so I think, think you know, it's like, like um, you, you, this is the menu for you to be healthy, to live prosper, and to live for a long time, right? But that doesn't, doesn't mean that, that everything, everything that, that you do has, has to follow all the seven T. As, as long as, as you have, have one of those, even one, one is good, good enough. enough. Make, make sure, sure that, that you're, you're doing it consistently. Making sure, sure that you're doing it with a clear, clear purpose. purpose. You're, you're not, not jeopardizing, jeopardizing the environment. The environment. You, are you are actually enhancing the community and, and create value. value. Then it's actually a thing. thing. Of course, now the race is always we all want to do all the seven T. But not not all activities. Will have, we can, can be really all, all the same SDGs. SDGs. So, so I strongly, I strongly believe, believe that this SDG is the way, the way we see things moving forward. forward. Of, of course, if you look at the predecessor of SDG, MDG, it was not that popular. But, but now, now what, what makes SDG popular is because finally the, the private sector is getting involved. Yes. Yes. Right? But when you talk about, about the Millennium Development Goal, it's more like a country and NGO, like a UN kind of work. So I think when, when you know, Cal talk about, about SDG, SDG, they understand what SDG is about. about right? When they talk about RMU, we understand. understand. So, so it's, it's a, a common, common language and a common menu that, that people know. know. This, this is, is what, what we need to follow. follow. And I think it's a, it's a very good, the guideline is very clear, you know, and you can use this as part of what, to show the world what you have done, right? In terms of what you are, as, as a human, human or created basically, you know, practicing humanism, humanism then, then you can, can see it in SDG. SDG. Otherwise, it's very hard for us to benchmark. What are we doing? doing? When I say I'm doing humanism, I'm doing good for community, what is that? So I think yeah. SDG has, a, it's, 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 it's gone, gone through a lot of iteration, from, um, um, maybe even prior to MDG, it becomes something that we can use as, uh, as a performance base if you claim yourself to do good. So I think that's, that's where I mean, I'm, I'm big, 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 we are a big, big sport of SDG and a lot of our activities. activities even today, we manage, manage so, so many things. things. We, we only, only focus nine out of 17 SDGs. SDG. And, and we can, can see it year, year by year. year. We, we benchmark it. We have a baseline and we monitor it. Because, because you know, an SDG will only be in uh, It's not going to be useful if you are not really benchmarking it. Monitor it. And you see your progress. Thank you, Thank very, you very much, much Pandana. Pandana. No, no, I guess, I guess from, from my, my perspective, perspective that be your invitation of DGs be um, that is interesting as well to note this, this, that they have, have a wider, wider base, base of a community beyond the MPGs. And, and it's actually the way in which, which we examine the involvement of the private sector, how they can be so articulative as well on the role and the, the framework of the MPGs. Uh, but also, it's also interesting, ladies and gentlemen, what Pandana's wife mentioned uh, is that not all 17 can be achieved. Uh, it is a very tough uh, goal, of course. It is a goal. Uh, but again, uh, what uh, uh, Darsona had retraded is a framework on which, we put, for example, to show us uh, what does the humanistic perspective as well uh, from a business point of view. Thank you so much, Pak Darsona. Uh, Pak Karim, um, any thoughts, Pak Karim, with regards to, again, um, the Rahul, a very important uh, statement coming from Berlina, uh, saying that uh, that HDGs um, is a old wine in a new bottle. <laughs> what would what be your, your thoughts? thoughts? Well, uh, I, I, so well, I think for me, SDGs, it, it is a very important phrase these days, and. and and it, it is, is a, a uh, yeah. yeah. And sorry, sorry, a bit, bit. Sorry, sorry, can you repeat the question, question again? Sure. sure. Um, the SDGs, SDGs as, as mentioned, mentioned by who um, uh, Helianti uh, Hilman uh, was considered as a phrase, uh, some of the goals, more as a, a rebranded from her perspective. Um, the values that she's carried, um, uh, developed, 
um, pioneer uh, to a company uh, is very much actually already within the values of actually stated in the SDGs. And therefore, she would have like to say that basically at this, at this point in time, that SDGs is more like a, a rebranding. Um, um, what would be your thoughts? Uh, do you agree with her or you might have a, dis, uh, a different perspective or actually um, you would like to go maybe go forward uh, in terms of um, uh, other thoughts uh, about SDGs, but in terms of uh, your everyday work uh, with Bambulonji. Thank you. I see. Yep. <clears throat> so yeah, for for me personally in Bambulonji, uh, we try to 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 be aligned with the sustainable, sustainable development uh, goals that we see here so, so often, often these days, days. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of funny that. that uh, a lot of uh, it, it has, has to be rebranded to remind the businesses, businesses that exist today. And I see, I see I've heard like criticisms that businesses have, have lost, uh, have been uh, viewed more, more neg negatively these days. days. <laughs> that it is more uh, a money, money machine, machine, that it is uh, disregarding how humans, uh, 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 it is disregard uh, the effect it has on humans, on humans and people in general. Uh, but, but I think it's, it's kind of, of uh, uh, bizarre that a business would be starting, starting to, 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 uh, to, 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 to go in that direction, direction because, like, like every business is for, for the people, people right? right? For, for everyone inside, inside that business or uh, the ecosystems around that business. Around that business. Mm -hmm. so whatever the product that is uh, uh, that, that, that business make, make is it's always to, to take our lives. So, so if a business is inside of that, that and it has, has to be reminded of new fancy terms such as such as SDGs. It shows, it shows that, that we have, have a lot of uh, uh, homework that we need to do, do right? right? And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and for Bambuji uh, itself, uh, we I think, I think we, we can say ourselves that, that we, 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 we are working in this, this uh, area, area that we're, we're trying, trying to be promoting a new sustainable material mm -hmm. for, for the construction industry. industry. Yes. yes. And uh, from, from my experience, experience yeah, yeah, it's, it's not, not as, as much as the others, others here. here. Uh, uh, I see I that, that uh, when people, people comment about uh, Bambuji, is that, oh, oh yeah, Bambuji, it's, 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 it's quite trendy these days, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, being sustainable and being green and all that. So right. I really I hope that, that people don't, don't see this as just a trend, trend. And, and I hope SDG doesn't just come and go as a term that was once a hit, a trendy thing. But I hope that people see this as uh, the, see, see the, the clear and present danger, danger that it is uh, encroaching on our, our, our environment. I mean, <laughs> uh, we, don't we don't have to go, go really, really far. In, in Jakarta alone, alone we, can we can see how bad our air pollution is, is our, uh, the, the, the rising uh, uh, sea level. Um, and you can, can really, really feel this if you, for example, go abroad and come, come back, back to Indonesia. Indonesia. I mean, uh, if, if you're from, from the UK, UK and, and once, once you land back in, 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 in Sukarno Hatta, you can feel, feel the, the, the really bad air quality that, that we are really did once, once we go back, back to our motherland. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. That, that, I, think I think that's, 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 that's a little, little story, uh, word for me, I guess, when, when, when it comes to sustainability, sustainability is that, uh, yeah, yeah, let's, let's hope, hope that, that businesses. Is, Really start to, to take into this seriously, and not just masquerading themselves as a champion of sustainability for the sake of capitalizing this trend and they they see it and truly fix the environment. Yeah. Well, thank well, thank you, Pastor. I think the message also you're trying, trying to convey to us is actually um, yes, we would like to understand about um, uh, SDGs, uh, but also the importance of avoiding greenwashing. Um, yes. and, and, and technically, you know, you know really, really SDGs, SDGs we take this to our heart as a guidance, guidance and it's actually not become so sad. It's, it's, it's actually something that will hopefully be able to be continued um, even beyond the life of the SDGs itself, which is in ending in, in, in 2030. Uh, but uh, yes, I, I take your point, uh, Bakarim. Um, your your efforts, efforts is actually with really regards to the contribution to the Staying in the nature, nature, nature uh, is not easy. And I guess, I guess uh, from, from, I think from the other speaker, there's a so called so challenge. It's actually, in a, in a way, way, you get time and patience. It's actually, actually an opportunity, opportunity to thrive. To thrive.
Thank, Thank you so much, Pak Karim. Karim. I think uh, I would like to have a final yeah. round, I think, with regards to uh, whether HDS is, is considered as an old wine and a new bottle. Who Santi, please. Um, any thoughts about that statement? Thank you. Who Santi? Uh, What's the, the, the question again? again? Yes, yes. The question, the question yes. yes. Uh, the, uh, the question, question would be, be is actually, actually a statement, statement interesting, interesting statement from Mama Ibu Heli Aliantilman uh, uh, with regards to uh, uh, her um, uh, uh, interpretation for the SDGs. SDGs. Uh, in, in her experience, uh, through her pioneering work, work with Javara, um, she had thought that actually her values, her mission that imposed her, her efforts actually uh, it's already, already in there, there. Um, not, not really, really, although now it's actually practiced in the form of an NDG. So she so thinks thing that, that the, the effort that, that she's done in Kocho is actually, is actually very, very much, much uh, already uh, reflected, reflected in the form of so called HDGs. Um, she she therefore, for uh, uh, my mind, it should be that that her effort is actually the so called SDGs is very much. Uh, the wisdom, wisdom that, that had been carried had been, been pushed forward, forward by Julian uh, and Team in Jabara. It's actually already there. there. And the SDG is basically in an other uh, term, term we are just this old um, <coughs> wine and new bottle. Um, do you agree with, with that, that kind of statement? Do you, or do you complement it with other alternative thoughts about uh, what do you think that the SDG is? Uh, uh, it's actually, actually an influence the way you conduct the business. business. Um, and, and again, again um, it, this, this is also um, uh, in relation to the humanistic, humanistic uh, perspective in business. business. Uh, and those are the, 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 the religious that I think you should do to seek again yeah, yeah, yeah. your, your, your thoughts on that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, uh, <coughs> as Haley uh, indicated, uh, <coughs> Very, very much, much I, I very, very much agree with Sally. It's, it's, it's just, just uh, I think the the the, the, the uh, if, if you look into Indonesia, who was who were actually the the the, 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 the guardian of the nature? It's mm -hmm. actually the, 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 the traditional apa namanya masyarakat adat. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, because, because they've been living, living in. in in, 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 in our, our forest, forest mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So they were actually the, 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 the guardian of our, 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 our environment in Indonesia. But <clears throat> for, for for people who are, who are let's say, say today's term, intellectuals, because they have the education, the modern education, they see those uh, traditional tribes as uh, uh, traditional, uh, and, and therefore it's kuno. Yeah? Yeah, 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 they yeah, yeah. don't see the wisdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yep, what, yep. what 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 uh, what what uh, uh, is trying to do what 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 uh, uh, is, is pursuing, pursuing is to show the wisdom, wisdom. <coughs> but uh, presented it in in, uh, in, in a modern, modern way. way. Okay. okay. Yep, so, yep. so when, when I, I hear what the current is doing, and everybody uh, uh, that 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 is participating in the panel, they're doing the basic things. things. <laughs> now, now, what, what Indonesia, Indonesia has, has to, <coughs> to deploy is, is by, by using the, the development of uh, the evolution of technology and, and, and uh, human, human religion, religion, the, 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 the way the academics are seeing things and, and making, making a theory of it, of it in, in more uh, in along in the current development of the world. world uh, that, that, that's why, uh, I mean, like, like Pak Koko always said, there, there is some strength in the Eastern Valley, the Eastern uh, uh, part of the world, with the Western part of the world. If they sit together, together then, then there will be a, a solution that would benefit the people at large. And, and this, this is, I think, the challenge uh, currently. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like when, when I, I when I graduated, I studied computer science, science. Yes, in 1974. Yes. There was, there was no, no education for computers in, in Indonesia yet. Yeah. But yet, yet I had the, the responsibility to, to deploy my scientific knowledge into some practical terms, terms that, that would benefit, benefit the people at large. large. So, so how, how do you do that? that? Yes, you can do that. that but, but would you make profit, profit with, with it? it? Mm -hmm. So I remember my father's message, don't, don't worry about, about making profit. profit. 
Just, just make sure, sure that you're providing a solution that would benefit, benefit your customer. customer. <laughs> you know? And, 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 uh, and in the return, return, just make sure that they have enough cash in your account. You know, and that they could pay our people. people. We could, <clears throat> we could uh, provide, provide good, good uh, income, income for our own people, people that they can live uh, in, in peace. Because, because my partner said, if they, they don't do it enough, enough they, they cannot, cannot have enough, enough for providing food. food. <laughs> How would you expect that they will concentrate working at peace in, in for us? us you know? <laughs> so that was the basic principle that, that my, my father gave me when I started uh, demanding, when he demanded from me to make a business out of providing computer services. Yep. Yep. Services is a very challenging uh, uh, <clears throat> commodity. Because, because it's, it's an intangible result, result that you get, but, but you, 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 you expect that it would be appreciated in terms of monetary. Yeah. Yes. So what, 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 uh, you know, if you... Recording in progress. We had dana pensiun, tunjangan selesai masa kerja, housing facility. Before there were KPR and uh, whatever. Now KBM and, 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 and health insurance, right? Yes, you will. That Thank was you. the only way to survive. If we don't yes. provide it for our people, how are they going to work for us? Yes. So right. that is one of the advanced uh, thought that, that, that was instilled by this group of friends that I mentioned before where yes. my father is doing it in the business perspective, but the spirit of it was the friendship is Pak Sujat Moko. Yes. Yeah? So, yeah. So, so this is now being challenged and this is more visible because yeah. companies now are more able to see, you know, what profit and what intangible, it, what type intangible thing can affect their business. Yes. The climate change, right? The yeah. scarcity of, of what, what is happening in Europe, right? Yes. Yes. Gas, the cut off by the Russian, they have to buy from America, which is far more expensive because the logistics are much more higher, right? And they're suffering now. So some people in Europe say it's, it's, it's much nicer to live in Indonesia. Thank you very you much, Ibu. Yeah, for your thoughts. The extent yeah. of family and whatever, right? Yes. So yes. Yeah, I, I pretty much agree with what uh, 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 Heli is, is, is uh, explaining. She's just taking what is available in Indonesia and making something out of it. And everybody, in, if they survive, they can survive just by selling nasi goreng or a Buddha. <laughs> they can right. send the children to school. And if I look back, my grandmother was owning just a warung. Yes. And look what happened to my father. Thank okay? you. Thank so, you. So that's, that's my, you know, 10 cents opinion. Thank you so much, Ibu. It only just shows the historical perspectives of the, the developments that the times that you've lived, Ibu, to share with us and that how time has changed and, and the, the need for this continuing uh, 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 adaptation. Um, I think it's one of the ways in which actually, uh, you know, although we're not forgetting that you mentioned about the basic understanding about you, the humanistic um, um, uh, face of business is simply do we want to make our workers happy or not thank you so much yeah, and, and why, why did we start business is to to try to secure the welfare to secure of the welfare. our families yes. right that is correct it was basic, basic question so don't, yes. don't sacrifice your your people or your family for yes. the sake of money or for the yep. sake of wealth yeah that is what pastor jat moko said it's not affluence yep. but it's yep. sufficiency a human centric approach thank you so much ibu um yeah. Well, thank you very much for the um, uh, uh, discussion, panel discussion. Uh, and if I may suggest, I would like to raise questions from our guests, from our participants here. Um, I will start with Bapa Anan Bapat. 
Uh, this is a question for any panelist or participant can answer. This is related to Elon Musk uh, taking over Twitter and firing all executives soon thereafter. A question, do you think that his action was supporting cause of humanism? Anyone, would, any panelists, keynote speakers, anyone would like to um, answer that? Please. We need a volunteer. But Dorsono would like to take a, a first crack at the, in Elon Musk and his and um, journey. I, I think the key <laughs> is, you know, uh, in reality, in business, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's, we, we cannot, cannot make, make everybody, everybody happy. happy right? I, I think, think it's really, you, have, you, have, to, you have, have to have a clear path of where you want to head, what, what kind, kind of vision and vision that you have. And unfortunately, unfortunately some people that work, work for you might not see it the same way that you do, right? Mm -hmm. And you might have to let them go. Of course, it's not easy to let them go. I'm sure with Shanti, you have more wisdom and knowledge and experience in the past. But I think it's, it's very, very un I, it, for the purpose of the good things that we have. And we see people are not in the same value with us. Particularly in Indonesia, is very common about integrity. Right? When, when you, you have, have somebody, somebody that has no integrity, for me, there should not be any SP1, 2, or 3. Right? If you get caught by the right people, if you get, if you get caught by the take money from the company, it is a big issue. It is a big integrity issue that you should let them go. So, so I cannot speak on behalf of Elon Musk because he has things in his mind. He has his directors that work for him in the company that he just took over. But I think, you know, as an entrepreneur, as a CEO of a company, it's very, it's inevitable that we have to fire somebody in our life. Okay. It is, uh, you know, it is something that we have to do. But I think if we do it with clear head, we are doing it very objectively. We know why we fire that people, then it should be fine. And we hope that we're doing it for the right reason. We believe that we're doing it for the right reason, then it should not make you feel bad and you should still be able to sleep at night, even though it's hard, I think. Thank you, Bhattar. You know, from this discussion, you only show the range of issues you could you know, unpack about the issue of humanism in business. Uh, thank you very much, but Dresden and also Panan for your contribution. Um, I'd like to have maybe other panelists who would like to respond to Panan's question. Firing of executives. Yeah, can I? I, I agree with. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead, I agree. With, I think for me, firing, firing people is always very difficult. Yep, yep. Uh, so, part of. of our, Our job as a executive is to make sure that we hire people. Uh, and I think that's you know, firing people, leaving people who are not with the, the same value with you in the company, the company as, as uh, is being said. It, it's actually creating a lot more problem in the, in the long, run, long run. So I think, yeah, uh, yeah. just as long as you've got the right reason to do it and, and make sure that you hire the right people. So then you don't have to do firing. Yeah. The often firing. I think that's that's my common. Common. Yes. I don't know why fire those people. Uh, so yes, that's probably internal to them. Yeah. I hope, I hope they're, they're ready, ready with their golden hat. Um. Any thoughts, Ibu? Maybe Ibu Heli. Uh. Any thought, Ibu Heli? Any thoughts about? Firing of executives by Elon Musk. What's your thought about? Uh, you know, actually, you I really seconded a statement from uh, Mas Darsono, yeah, Pak, yeah. Ah, because I, I, in the past, I did make, make my, my mistake, mistake because, because I don't, don't fire people. people. <laughs> I, I did make, make my mistake, mistake because of that. You know, so, um, yeah, so, so I think, of course, we don't know what's going on. Mm. We don't know what's the reason. Mm -hmm. uh, but we cannot mm -hmm. judge people from, from the outside because, because we don't know how, how things, things are. And probably, as much as some of the things said, that, that, you know, know, there might be um, performance issues, issue, but there's also might be an integrity issue. issue. Yes. So, so, yeah, so there's always, you know, two sides of the coin. But, you know, but I think... It's, it's really, really um, we ha I think I it's really about being objective. objective. I, I think, think that's, you know, I agree with that. that. Yes. yes. Thank, Thank you, Boo, uh, for your response as well. Um, 
I'd like to now to come to Ibu Vivian Philip. Uh, Ibu mentioned, you mentioned about, would you like to say something about SDGs? Would you like to make a comment, Ibu? Ibu Vivian Philip, I think. Are you still here, Ibu? Is Ibu Vivian Philip here? She is there. I can see her. Yeah. But I don't know if she, I think she's muted. Okay. Um, if not, then um, I would like to just move to. There's also from Pa Anan. Uh, would you like to elaborate a bit to about your uh, uh, your question? Pa? Is it about the Elon Musk? Silakan Pa Pa Anan, please. Pa Anan, are you there? Yeah, I believe Pak Agus and the, uh, oh, the team okay, should, should give the ini Pak. I'm sorry, this is Lia Pak, just in case yes. the team should uh, give the permission for Pak Anan or Bu Vivian to unmute myself. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, just hang on, Ibu. Uh, we'll start with Bu Vivian. Uh, we will unmute and also Pak Anan to unmute. Thank you. We'll start with Ibu Vivian. Uh, I hope Bhutivian can have access, but also Pa'anan to have access as well. So hang on. Yeah, I can unmute now. Okay. Okay. Please um, do again, yes. Yeah, yeah. The Sustainable De Development, Development Goals, Goals, the SDG, SDG uh, is um, an, 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 an interesting, interesting point, point, but I, I want, want to um, mention that... Um, some, some uh, this, this is, is um, especially um, um, uh, this, this is about productive, productive goals, goals. And, and I okay. think we should we should uh, look a bit further than that because, because if you look at some uh, tradi traditional groups at Salem, you can, can see that their environment uh, is being threatened. Their um, their um, uh, Adapt area, area that their their, um, their, their habitat, habitat is threatened, threatened because of the goals of um, of production, and, and I, I think, think there should be more uh, attention for these groups. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Vivian. Welcome. Pa Anan. Yeah. Silakan Pa Anan, please. Thank you, Pa Agus. Yeah. I think it was not about firing employees. I mean, there is, as uh, someone said, if you're going to issues, they mm -hmm. cannot compromise with integrity. That's fair. fair. I mean, when, when, when you have, have to fire, you have to fire. fire. But I picked up Elon Musk's issue because he is uh, a high profile person. He runs a company which has the largest market cap. On one hand, doing so much for green energy, but the same person was also heavily criticized by people for the manner in which he fired people. First of all, trying to acquire Twitter at a higher price, yes. then trying to go back on the deal, and then entering into some verbal uh, combat with the executive. Then he comes up, shows on Twitter that he's bringing, bringing a sink in his hand, and then let that sink in. So for a person of that caliber, of that stature, I found it rather, uh, you know, like, uh, I could not understand. I mean, he, he is a person that everybody admires for his sustainable values, goals, that is why the company is so highly valued. But on the yes. other hand, he goes into acquiring companies, which we don't know why, and then suddenly the manner in which he treats people, where when you say people are being used resources, that's the problem. Right? When you talk about humanism, don't treat them right. little man. So why you're, 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 you don't find anything good with them? What is the ego issue? I don't know. The manner in which he suddenly comes in and you know you fire the whole board. Now that I'm not saying that he did it wrong. I just want to see you know the parallel. Is that the way to run a company? Yeah. Or is it that we do not so bad? How could be how 
today with the so, so popular with people the same twitter where uh, where a person like even uh, donald trump was banned is that because he gave hate speeches so i am i am not an anti trump twitter nor i am a fan of anybody right because the high profile <laughs> issue i don't know maybe the panel is can go somewhere like that thank you all right Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, Panan. Uh, any, any thoughts, thoughts for that, that uh, panelist uh, from pa Anand's perspective? Um, there's an element here that this is a high-profile um, individual. Um, when people look up to, for whatever reason, um, uh, in his actions, for day-to-day -day actions, particularly in running a business. Um, um, any, any thoughts uh, from, from Anand uh, to, to, to respond to, to Anand's uh, question? Does that, that Consider as humanistic uh, practice and doing business for what Elon Musk has done. Um, Pakarem or Ibu uh, Santi, any thoughts? Before I actually would like to close. I have and, yeah, go ahead. Hiring hundred people, okay? Yeah. Uh, but it's because the industry has changed. Right. So, like I said. Uh, if you if you know your people well, then uh, you try to to compensate them by facilitating that they do not lose their uh, ability to 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 to, to survive. Yeah. Mm. So uh, if you've been treating your people well, and because of the change of industry, we have to uh, change strategy and therefore close down a department or at uh, or also. Uh, you find a solution, you can pass it on to your customers who might want to be in need for that particular qualification. Or sometimes I would talk to them what their real passion would be about, and I said, why don't you pursue that? And, and if you find people, there should be some compensation for them, you know, there are laws for them, right? So, I mean, if, if they believe they can afford it, the company, they might do it, right? But if not, you have to find a solution. That, 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 so, fighting uh, is, 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 is a world of domination of, 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 of employment, but there are problems. Yep. And, 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 and uh, companies are giving, uh, if it's for a good reason for the company, that you also have to have a, a fair treatment to the people that you, you release, right? And yep. they, they have been working for us and they have been compensated also. So, if you have a proper, I uh, call it human capital policy, then uh, whatever happened to you in, 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 your, in your career, that there is some, uh, I call it some cushion also that has to be also integrated in you as an employee uh, and uh, the, the protect you just in case there is some change in the company you're working in. Yeah, so you. it depends on the, on the lack of service that you've been uh, looking for the company. Thank, Thank you. you. So that, that's not that's a straight forward thing if you find that you have just cut off. That is correct. Right. Yeah. Current, current uh, policies of yes. uh, regulation do protect both sides. Both sides, both sides. yes. Terima kasih, Ibu. Pak Karim, before I just move on and to just to close this discussion, I would like to ask also Prof. Aman because I remember he mentioned about in his speech about that people are treated as resources instead as human beings. But uh, let me have, uh, Pak Karim, would you like to have any comments about what Elon Musk or what Pak Anand had mentioned? Any thoughts about that? Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I don't think <laughs> I can <laughs> comment on right. right. Elon Musk. Uh, I, I never purchased a multi-billion dollar company before. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, if and if I have to comment on Elon Musk, I haven't been following in on him lately. It's, okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. All right. Maybe, Maybe his actions is a bit bizarre lately. <laughs> okay. Uh, can only say that. Thank, thank you so, so much, much Pakarim. Pakarim. So, so thank, thank you so, so much. much. Now, now coming back, back to Prof. Aman, Aman, we have uh, a lot of work here, Prof. Aman. It's a very interesting question. You had mentioned that actually, again, this is a proof, um, possibly what the actions of Elon Musk is treating the way he does is actually treating human beings, people as resources instead as human beings in value creation process. Any thoughts, Prof. Aman, uh, as head of our IPMI International Business School? Any thoughts? I think, again, if we, you, you cannot, cannot just generalize, generalize 
the the situation uh, without knowing uh, what the inside of the the, the real uh, probably vision and also strategy of Elon Musk when uh, he is taking over the, the Twitter. So I think to some extent some of the strategy when people are trying to uh, probably <coughs> take over the company, they also would like to put to make sure that the values they are trying to develop is uh, according to what they have in, uh, in, in their, their practice at the moment. So, being the trusted, trusted people, uh, uh, trusted, trusted group, group <laughs> and also the team, that the probably is uh, will secure the, the, the strategy and the, the objective of the company. So, it's not that simple, too simple, you know, conclusion when we are uh, observing, some firing or hiring. Uh, but again, as being discussed, if there is a, a good reason for that, there is also objective justification and trying to, to deal the situation is just, not just only firing, but maybe trying to settle down uh, in, in humanistic approach. That probably is also accepted as a win-win situation for what is certain you know, uh, cases. So I don't have any clear answer for that, but it seems to me uh, the common sense may be how they can, can you, you have, because you bought something, uh, something new with your own, uh, for, for example, uh, you know, uh, capital investment. So you want to, to make sure that the investment will be, will be meaningful and will be uh, giving also the, the benefit to, to all the stakeholders that get involved. So again, it's a very complex thing, but I cannot, I cannot just, just uh, draw a simplified the situation and say that this is uh, uh, unhuman or, or inhuman, this is a very humanistic, so that's, that's probably my, my reaction. Thank you very much, Prof. Aman. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to conclude this session. Thank, Thank you so much for your participation. And just please allow me to make some concluding notes, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my observation are this. Um, there are many times that the presented by the panelists and also keynote speakers, um, it very much about that what we've tried try to talk about here is that first and foremost, we're trying to convince everyone that business is as a force for good. Yeah? Um, I've tried to you know, find uh, some uh, silver linings here, you know, the words to do good, to do good for the country, um, for example, to, to, uh, to protect the forgotten indigenous food, for example, culture, wisdom, a force for good. Um, and another thing that is actually interesting that's out to be repeated here, ladies and gentlemen, is about the issue of values. Um, it seems that values, um, many times mentioned uh, throughout the panelists as well, keynote speakers, and also even here uh, as respondents, um, values, uh, is important. Um, uh, the speech coming from Pa Aman, for example, that business schools need a value filled rather than value empty curriculum, for example, uh, to make sure that we have graduates as potential transformative leaders. Um, I think Ibu Santi mentioned here, I just wanted to note, uh, I'll come back to Ibu, it says um, that um, I think um, there was something about a glue that value is actually. Um, uh, a glue that binds owners, business, and employees. Yeah. Um, very interesting. And, and I think all of these um, discussions, and also I think coming from Tomoro san mentioned about that the issue of being staying humble and being responsible and giving back to the community, um, which includes actually what Jeff and his team are doing together with also ITMI to garner this collaboration. Uh, the diaspora to do good for Indonesia and especially for Maluku uh, is actually important. Um, with Kalbe uh, mentioned that, again, um, what they're trying to do, their business is actually to see that everyone, that it is a great vehicle uh, to do good for the country yeah, in a more sustainable way. And finally, with uh, Pak Karim, with his work for the alternative approach, but sustainable business is actually to respect 
what nature had provided, and what nature that we need to um, secure for the next generations to come. And with that, um, I would uh, yield and return. And again, I thank you for your time and contributions, everyone, uh, to our uh, wonderful discussions. And I hope to see you again in our next um, events. Um, thank you. I yield and I return to our MC. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Pak Gus Lukman, for the interesting and insightful, also fruitful talks and discussions. And Bapak Ibu, before we close, we close the, the program, program maybe, maybe that's, that's too late, late for, for uh, uh, we, we have, have a the documentation for this program, program because, because uh, some, some prophet, prophet, prophet said that, that, that no photo is wax. wax. So, so can we turn, turn on your camera so we will have, have a, a uh, photo in, in the, the end of uh, program. program. Maybe, Maybe Putri can read the photo session, please. Just turn on the camera, Bapak Ibu. The, the webcam. webcam. Nice, very good. And give your best mind for today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Putri, may read. Okay. okay, nice. All right. I think, I think we're ready. ready. All right. Okay. okay. Is, it Is it done? done? Is it done? Uh, I think it's done, done. yeah. Okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Bapak Ibu, the webinar has reached uh, its conclusion. So we much appreciate it for your involvement in this program. We have, we hopefully that you found this event to be educational and also beneficial. Thank you for your active participation. And the e certificate will be mailed to each participant. And uh, stay safe. I uh, have a good. Right of the day. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hope to see you on our next evening session or webinar. Excuse me, Bu. Yeah, maybe there's a few words coming from Pak Gary. Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh my goodness, Bapak Ibu. Thank you for your baby. From Gary. Okay. From Gary. Okay. If I don't do this. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'll be as quick as possible uh, because I would like to close by uh, thanking uh, uh, for all, all of you for the, uh, for the webinar. Um, I would uh, like to thank uh, um, uh, through uh, the, the story of how we got here today. It was uh, Bhushanti, actually, actually, who uh, our keynote speaker posted in uh, an Indian WhatsApp group in January, a long time ago, uh, announcing the first webinar of a series of webinars that would be taking place for the celebration of uh, Mumbai Chastri Jatapopo in Tari, Indonesia. And so thank you very much, uh, Shanti, for the early heads up and for your keynote speech. It was uh, very touching as it clearly came from your heart. Uh, talking about art, I've been a long time admirer of Sujit uh, Moko, even though I must have confessed I have read only a small portion of his huge uh, written output. Uh, but because of that admiration, because I happen to know Nana, uh, I asked her if he could join the celebration of Sujit Moko. And can you read it? And he settled on November uh, 16th today. Uh, for, for, for the event. Uh, so uh, thank you, Lana, very much for the privilege and honor to be part of this uh, uh, year's celebration of your father. Thank you also for bearing with us in our weekly meetings, as you mentioned, and uh, your uh, opening uh, remarks in planning for uh, our November and for your valuable suggestions, including making the young generation a focal point as that was an aspect of uh, a great interest by uh, by Sri Jaya Um And uh, we, therefore, because of that, we invited Karim Munaf of uh, Lamboloki, uh, who is a member of the millennial generation. I think he just missed 
being given uh, uh, to, to speak as a keynote speaker to represent the younger generation. So thank you, Pakai, for your speech and for your participation in the panel as well. Very much uh, appreciated. Uh, I must say that in practice, it is not easy to find a direct connection to the business world in Sujaj Mokos visionary writings. Uh, the connections mainly were mainly in the context of uh, the economy and of a people-centered development uh, process. Uh, but a sentence in the awarding of the Max Society Award, which he received the Asian Nobel Prize, um, uh, might uh, help us. So allow me to quote. Uh, and encouraging both Asians and outsiders to look more carefully at the village folk ways they would modernize, which at Moko is fostering awareness of the human dimension ascension to all development. His writings have added consequentially to the body of international thinking on what, uh, uh, what can be done to meet one of the greatest challenges of our time, how to make life more decent and satisfying for the poorest 40% in Southeastern and Southern Asia, end quote. In that spirit, we finally decided to write cases on companies that were created to resolve problems of our time. In this regard, I thank very much our panelists, the founders of businesses that meet this critical criteria for their permission to write cases on their businesses. Uh, Tomohoro and Asuka Hamakawa of his company, who is a founder, a member of the founding family, represented here also by uh, professional executive uh, Uu Merina Padasono, founder of Rimba Makumura Utama, uh, co-founder, I should say, of Rimba Makumura Utama, who is a founder of Chibara, a Jeffrey of uh, Bahasa Bakudara. Thank you all for taking the time to represent your company today. I would also like to thank my uh, colleagues of the MMK Center, our senior associates, Pahari Pahakil, Agus, our senior fellow and our moderator for today, and Baputri, our associate, who actually organizes everything for us, including this webinar and the processes leading up to it. She also is usually our MC, but she has medical issues at the moment. And uh, we are grateful for Balia from the Demi Student Affairs, who has at short notice taken over uh, MC duties. And of course, Director Aman Wirakatakusuma for so eloquently setting the table for us today. Thank you very much. Uh, to Bumitai and the Mbatsa Sujaya Mokotini, including Pa'arif, the translator for today, it was great to work with you and we thank you for organizing it so well. Finally, I would like to thank all our participants for attending our webinar. As Prof. Aman mentioned, the work, the work before us is not done, and we need a generation to come to carry on. In that spirit, when the cases are ready, and when we get permission from the companies for their release, we will use the cases in our classes, uh, hopefully in other schools' classes, to inspire um, our students. And as a mark of our appreciation and thanks, we will also be sending uh, those cases to all the participants who have registered here. Uh, I should add that I said when it is finished. I did not say if, as a bit total uh, of your press, it might take a bit of a time. Uh, it has been a long process since January, but as I mentioned to Padiatri, who is a counterpart of the Earth Company's case, it has been a labor of love. And we thank you all for making it possible. Thank you. And uh, Julia, it's all yours. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dere Habir, Bapak Ibu. Dr. Dere Habir is uh, actually the initiator of the today's webinars and also director of IKNIK centers. Uh, it's all done, actually. And um, let's close this and have a good night, Bapak Ibu. And see you on the next on upcoming IPNI events. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you.